Susie Lopez. Ms. Lopez is the state attorney for Hillsborough County. And we also have Mark Brutnell, who is the special agent in charge of the Tampa office. This is how serious and we are with our investigations, and what you're here today is really remarkable. We're blessed that everything turned out the way that it did. It certainly could have been a lot worse, and I think you'll agree after we finish our briefing with you today. But to have this, the state attorney with us is huge, and it, it means a lot. So thank you very much, Ms. Ms. Lopez, for being with us. I want to introduce you to Luke Neely. Luke Neely is a bad man. And it, here's when we became involved with it. It was about 8.10 this morning when a 911 call came in that Luke Neely was throwing Molotov cocktails onto a roof and at a house in North Lakeland. Obviously, we can't give the address because these folks are victims. There were three people in the house, a mom, a dad, and an adult daughter. We learn later that Neely knew this adult daughter this because they had gone to school together in high school. We have this remarkable program called Live 911. It's a computer program whereby our deputies are able to monitor the Live 911 call when it comes into the communication center. Our response was one minute and 18 seconds. As Deputy Hearth arrived, he actually saw our suspect throw one of seven Molotov cocktails that were thrown. Two of them exploded on the house. The others apparently rolled down and were ignited in the yard. Deputy Hearth hollered at Luke, our suspect, told him to stop. He jumped in the vehicle and began to flee. Deputy Hearth began to chase this vehicle south on Highway 98 and he attempted two pit maneuvers in order to stop this fleeing arson suspect. He was able to drive out of the pit maneuver, but during the second pit maneuver, uh, Deputy Hearth actually broke his hand on the steering wheel. He was, he was driving the pit maneuver, jerked the wheel, and snapped his wrist. Other deputies were there, so he allowed them to take lead on the pursuit. Immediately, our suspect hit, U hit Interstate 4 or State Road 400 and went westbound with deputies once again in pursuit. When we got west of the county line, ultimately, we were able to pit him again and cause a vehicle crash. It's interesting to know when we cause the vehicle crash that he got out and started to run as it would be toward T-Rex. There may some, be some photographs by the media. Look what he had in his hand, an AR-15 with 57 rounds of ammunition and fully loaded. In addition to that, he had a handgun, a 380, on his hip that was fully loaded. So as, as soon as the pit maneuver occurred, three of our deputies began to shoot at Luke Neely. Lieutenant Rylott shot one time, Deputy Tillery shot four times, Deputy Barnum shot five times. We hit Luke three times, twice in the right leg, once in the left leg, and once in the groin. And we've changed the looks of his groin forever, if you know what I mean. He's in custody at the hospital being treated. 
So because it's in Hillsborough County, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office was assisting us with this and because it's an uh, officer involved shooting in Hillsborough County, Florida Department of Law Enforcement investigates. It is remarkable, not only did we get a team of professional law enforcement from FDLE, but that our special agent in charge came out himself and Mark, I appreciate that so very much. So as this investigation is going on, one of my lieutenants gets a call from the Tampa Police Department. And you know what we find out? Our man here driving this truck started early in the morning, apparently in Tampa. This is under investigation by the Tampa Police Department where he attempted to set a tree on fire at 16th Avenue and 6th Street in Ebor. But that's not enough. We have a video clip and you'll see it. When he leaves there, apparently at about 241, he goes to the Ritz where he tries to set the rear of the building and does set the air conditioning unit on fire. Let me underscore, it's reported to me there were a thousand people in that building at that time. Did you hear what I said? Well, he fled from there, and at about 3.33, once again, he was at 6th Avenue and 19th Street in Ebor, where he was trying to set a fence and a tree on fire. And at about 4.15 this morning, he was at 1805 East 7th Street, where he set a trash fire at Gaspar's. Now, we didn't know all of this when he decided to go over to this house in North Lakeland. So you said, okay, how does he end up there? Well, as I said, he went to school with this young lady. They had been friends. They had not dated. In fact, the last time she had seen him was in 2016 when a group of friends decided to go to California. That was about six years ago. They were in California, and he got really, really weird. And she called her parents and said, hey, can you give me a, uh, the money to change my plane ticket? I need to get away from this guy. He has not actively stalked her, as we thought he probably had. We would call it more passive occasionally stalking, but when she'd say, get away, then he would get away. This is what the house looked like. The neighbors were calling 911, saying the roof's on fire. Obviously, you can see that sh the shingles were, in fact, set on fire. We've charged him with a litany of charges here. We've charged him with three counts of attempted first-degree murder on our victims inside the residence, one count of arson, seven counts of firebombing, one count of resisting arrest. There will be other charges, resist, resisting, fleeing to elude, aggravated fleeing to elude. The Hillsborough Sheriff's Office is filing the aggravated assault charges against the law enforcement officers, and they are working the criminal charges against the suspect, and FDLE is doing the, the shooting. I'm going to turn the podium over to my friend and the SAC from Tampa, Mark Brutnell, and he's going to give you the details of their investigation that he's capable of releasing at this point, understanding that everything we're telling you today, as I always say, is early. We're as transparent and as early as we can be, and obviously minute details are subject to change as the investigation goes forward. Thank you, sir. Just like the sheriff said, we are early on in this investigation. We've been on the interstate since about 10.30 this morning, so we're looking at maybe six hours, seven hours in, into this investigation. We are solely focused on the uh, use of force investigation. The three deputy sheriffs from Polk County Sheriff's Office that fired their weapons at this individual, that is our charge. That's what we'll do. Uh, we have several interviews to do, a crime scene to complete. I want to thank the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office for their assistance on that. Uh, we have witnesses to interview, a lot of digital evidence to still uh, get our hands on, but we have a lot of work ahead of us. I also want to thank the huge collaborative effort of the law enforcement community here in this part of the state. Between Tampa PD, 
Polk County Sheriff's Office, us, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, and the State Attorney's Office, uh, we all came together at a very short moment's notice to put this individual off the street. This guy, like the sheriff said, 59 uh, bullets in that AR-15, a bunch of Molotov cocktails. Uh, and he started his crime spree very early, but I want to applaud your deputy sheriff for doing the right thing and saving the citizens from this guy. He was clearly, he had no regard for the safety of anybody today, from I-4 to Tampa to Polk, back to Tampa. So I just want to say uh, thank you for all your help, and uh, our investigation is ongoing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Susie Lopez, and I'm the Hillsborough County State Attorney. This morning, my office was called to the scene at I-4 and Branch Forbes Road. So as we typically do, I responded with my chief investigator as well as the administrative chief of the major crimes division from my office. Along with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, the state attorney's office will review the use of force as we always do. We are also reviewing any criminal charges against Mr. Neely with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office as well as the Tampa Police Department. It's important to note here the collaboration with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, the Polk County Sheriff's Office, and the Tampa Police Department to apprehend Mr. Neely today. My office looks forward to further collaboration with Sheriff Judd, Sheriff Cronister, and Chief O'Connor as we work to prosecute Mr. Neely for all of the crimes that he committed, both in Hillsborough and Polk counties. Crime does not stop at the county line. The work that these agencies have done today since the early morning hours of this morning and continue to do together will keep all of our communities safe. Thank you, Sheriff Judd. Thank you, Special Agent Brutnell. The State Attorney's Office in, in Hillsborough County and in Polk County will take it from here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lopez. Are there any questions? Sure. Any sense of motive behind this, or are we talking to about someone who is basically a pyromaniac? Well, you can see that for whatever reason, because there is not, as we know at this moment, a tipping point between one of our victims and this guy. They knew each other. They had not socialized since 2016. They weren't boyfriend and girlfriends. He had tried to come to where she worked over in Ebor a time or two, but nothing aggressive and no further information that we're, that we're aware of at this early stage of the investigation. We just know that he went on a rampage in Ebor last night. Fortunately, he was not successful in burning anything down, but I shudder when I think that, as it's reported to me, there were a thousand people in the Ritz when he obviously tried to set that place on fire. So, no, at this point we haven't been able to put the, any details together. Any we are looking at his priors, but they're not significant that we know of. He was in the military at one time, and we will follow up with that in the next few days. No, because we were quick. And then now, he did, during, during the pursuit on the interstate, we have radio traffic that talks about he's got something in his hand, he's reaching down in the seat, but he did not fire any shots. Do you guys believe he had the AR-15 with him while he was in Ebor and while he was traveling? Do you believe he had that with him this whole time? There's no reason not to believe that. He has not talked to us at this point in the investigation but there's no reason not to believe that. And it's just a blessing because later in the morning, a Tampa police officer saw him and stopped him. Wasn't really sure if that was the vehicle, but it was suspicious and walked up to the vehicle and he fled and took off. At that moment in time, Tampa police didn't have a nexus between the arsons and the vehicle, just a suspicion, so obviously they didn't pursue. But it's the grace of God that he didn't pull that AR up that was fully loaded and shoot that police officer. Were there witnesses in the Ebor that saw these different fires? We are seeking out witnesses. We know that there are some. We know that we have some video. We know that there should be a lot more witnesses than have come forward. So if you saw any of this or saw someone throwing Molotov cocktails in Ebor last night, 
It's not the 4th of July, and you should never throw them anyway. So give us a call. We need to talk to you. Would the fire team be trying to start an evil with that rich Molotov cocktails as well to help that out? It appears to be you know, at this early point in the investigation. Do you know anything about his home life? Was he living with his parents? Did you talk to his family at all? We are at his residence now. He lives in Polk County. We'll be serving search warrants there. As you can imagine, his family is less than cooperative at this point in the investigation, but we don't know a lot about that. Keep in mind, as you heard our special agent in charge just say, we're out on this crime scene all day long. So that's questions and investigations that will occur in the, in the next few days. Is there family that have to be hospitalized, or did they run away from the house when this was all happening? They did not have to be hospitalized. He was not successful in setting the entire house on fire. He only was successful in burning the roof. Now understand, we there were seven fire bombings of the house, but apparently only two of them broke on the house. The others apparently tumbled off of the roof and caught fire on the ground. Were there any more of these devices in his vehicle when you when you finally got That's up? still under investigation. I don't know. Do you know how he obtained the guns? Were they legally owned by him? It's too early in the investigation. We're still dealing with a preliminary, of course. FDLE will, will do a complete and thorough investigation. It goes without saying they are an ultimate professional law enforcement agency and will dot every I and cross every T. And this is just one more investigation. We're working with them, and we work with FDLE every day and are, are proud to do that. You mentioned your daughter had worked in Ybor. She approached her there at one point. Did she work with the Ritz or? I, well, I don't know where she worked, but she worked in Ebor at a couple different places, but I'm not sure if it was the Ritz or not. And did she get specific into what was it about him during their trip in California that set her off? He creeped her out. He creeped her out. And so nothing that, that why it started where it started and, and ended where it ended? No. In, in fact, Interestingly enough, we found one witness in Lakeland. A lady walks her dog early in the morning. She said, I saw the vehicle there at 740 in the morning. We didn't get the 911 call until, what, 810 or so. So he had been there about 30 minutes. And obviously, when all of this started, we had no idea of what he attempted all night long in Ebor. But at the end of the day, you know what we know at this point in time. I appreciate the Tampa Police Department. They are vigorously working on their investigations. The Hillsborough Sheriff's Office are, well, is graciously going to file all the criminal charges with Mrs. Lopez's office from what occurred in Hillsborough County. We'll be filing charges from Polk County. And then ultimately, our state attorney, Brian Haas, and Ms. Lopez will get together on they will decide how and when to proceed with prosecution. But we were all very fortunate last night and this morning because this could have been a bad, bad scene. But that's what deputies do. They stand in the gap between good and evil. Thankfully, someone saw something and they said something. They dialed 911. And I want to close out before we leave today and just underscore once again to have the state attorney from Hillsborough County care enough to not only go to the scene and spend the day but to come here and be with us is remarkably special. That's the kind of state attorney that's going to look out for all of the community all of the time. Thank you very much. We've got this video clip.